Yeah, so my uh, grandfather, uh, who grew cider apples for Bulmers, uh, in 1921, uh, Bulmers promised a price increase. Uh, they reneged on the price increase. And so my grandfather said, right, I'm going to pull out all the cider apples and I'm going to plant hops because they are the cash crop for the future. And he was right uh, up until about 1999 when we finally decided we could no longer make a go of hops. Uh, they had been challenged by uh, verticillium wilt, which is a disease that can take the hops almost literally overnight. You can have a, a, a hop yard that's looking in the full bloom of health and then uh, wake up the next morning and it's taken uh, one row or half a row or an acre. So uh, unpredictable um, there. Labour was getting harder to get. Unfortunately, the golden years of families from South Wales and from the West Country were, sorry, the Black Country, not the West Country, uh, were getting uh, harder to find. Uh, and it was ahead of Eastern European labour becoming more readily available. That was tough. Uh, and generally, the hop market uh, was getting really challenged. Uh, um, America was starting to find its feet with growing hops. The Pacific Northwest was finding that they could grow wonderful varieties uh, disease-free for at least 10 years. Uh, economically, it left, it left us way behind because uh, we're a lot more challenged. Our inputs are a lot higher for hop growing. Uh, and so I'm afraid we had to take the radical decision to stop growing hops. And uh, we lost our primary cash crop there and then. Uh, so I'm Tom Oliver, uh, and the farm is Creswell and Oliver. My grandfather was Cyril Creswell. And uh, we have started growing hops in 1923 or 4, I think it was. And we finished growing hops in 1999. And they were our primary cash crop all that time. Since we've not been growing hops, cash is a lot harder to come across. Um, but I took the uh, initiative of restarting planting cider apples. And uh, so we've come sort of full circle from 1921. We've gone through the hop phase. We're back in the cider phase now. What I like about it is it puts hops in its relevant place. You know, every, every farm had a hop yard. You know, even, even, even just the smallest farm up the road. Um, Panniers, Pearson, Sonny Morris. Sonny Morris had uh, only had about five acres, but half an acre was hops. And they didn't have any ability to pick them or anything, but people would come and pick. And they'd, so every farm ha had a hop yard. That's the thing I find is most fascinating. Um, and, and now, uh, you know, what are we left with? I, I don't know. Who, have they told you how many hop growers there are in in the in the country now is a fraction of what they used to be just in Herefordshire, thirty, 50. about fifty. Yeah. yeah. You uh, have links still with Inga and Steve. Do you think it's important that this sort of these stories are recorded? Oh, I think I think I think it's incredibly important because nobody would believe you or understand you if you said to them, it, to to hear Inga talking about uh, how she approached uh, life and work. And the situation that she came in, uh, I, I think it is, it, it is, it is, Inga is relatively unique, if I'm absolutely honest. There aren't many people with a story quite like her to say. Um, but the whole, uh, the whole approach to work and the whole philosophy behind work, um, it, it, it is different. Um, it has changed. I still think there are a lot of people now who, who will work with the with the same pride, but it's the almost the unquestioning aspect of it that's that, that's sort of interesting. It's 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 not the lot that befell me. It's 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 what we do. I mean, it's what it's what we do that makes everyone I think function a lot better. So I, I'm I think it's a you must must record the enthusiasm for work.